Yo, what's going on guys, it's your boy Travis Dykes. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to record yourself playing live. And if it, that means if you're on stage, if you're playing in church, uh, no matter where you're playing, this is just some cool ways that you can record yourself your inner mix or your wedges live. And also how you can do it with your video on your phone. So without further ado, let's get into the lesson. All right, so let's talk about how we can record on our phones and get some really high quality footage. Most people nowadays have an iPhone. Um, if you don't have an iPhone, you probably, you, if you, or if you have an Android, um, like there's some sick cameras on some Androids like Samsungs and, uh, but the thing is is that like you can get some sick quality out of the cameras on these new phones nowadays. I'm gonna show you how to do it on an iPhone because that's the one that I see a lot of people with. And it's very easy to get the high quality out of it. One thing, first thing is first, if you're playing live, it may sometimes be easier to use your front camera because you can kind of see yourself and see what's happening and see what's wrong. But like, if you do the back camera, you can't see that. So, I mean, that's, it's really up to you, but let me show you really quick how you can go into your settings and change it to get the highest quality. Um, there's a lot of videos on this, but I'll show you uh, just a quick way of how you could do this. So you go to your settings and then you scroll down. You're gonna scroll down until you see uh, the camera app come up. There's a little arrow right there. You're just gonna click on that. And then you are going to see where it says record video at 1080p at 50 FPS or frames per second. You're gonna click on that. And then you see, is now you see all these different ways you can do it. You got 720, you got 1080 HD, you know, 660 frames. So what we're gonna do, I like to do 4K at, at 30 frames per second. You could do it at 60 frames per second, but it's gonna take the uh, highest amount of space on your phone. So that's the reason why I do 30 because it's 170 megabytes per minute of audio uh, per minute of video rather than 400 megabytes. Now, when I go to my camera, when I go to my camera, um, it's going to show when I go to video in the top right corner 4K at 30 frames per second. 4K at 30. And so now we're shooting at the high, a really high quality and you're gonna notice a massive difference. So now that you have that, what you wanna do is you wanna get some kind of way of mounting it to where it's um, even, where it's always like it's consistent, okay? Um, so I got this little, uh, this little bright like mount thing uh, from Best Buy. It's like maybe like 25 bucks, 30 bucks or something like that. So it's got like this bendy, like kind of tripod, it's a bendy tripod kind of deal. So you can like wrap it around stuff. You, you can make this do whatever you want it to do. Oh, and you get one of these little um, clips like this. You can find these, like they have a, I got this actually off of my selfie stick. I, I don't know why I had a selfie stick, but I had one and I was like, okay, maybe I could connect these two. And so I just got this off of a selfie stick, literally, and just connected it straight to here. And, and it screwed it on here and it was it worked perfect and so now all I got to do is clip this on just like that and I'm ready to go so now you go to your video and just set it in a place that gets where uh, gets a good little look of everything that you're doing um, sometimes I like because I know for myself I'm a person that kind of when I'm playing the bass I kind of stand to the right more so I'm gonna get so I want my shot to be more so on like on my angle on my right side than like on my left side because I'm gonna be turned away from the camera if I'm gonna be doing that so uh, just little things like that figure out that thing uh, figure out what, what it is for you that um, that you do those things that you do and just kind of use that if, to figure out what to do when it comes to your angles. There's so many different ways, you can get so creative with it, but this is just a basic, basic way that you can do this um, and just set it up really quick all the time. So now let's check out some ways that we can record audio. The first uh, one we're gonna start on is the Avion um, personal mixer, which is normal. This is one that you see in churches a lot, a ton, okay? So now, probably wondering, all right, so how, how do you do it? It's only one channel going out. So this is a really, this is like a little bit of a thing. I was like, man, how am I gonna show this? 
But this is actually a really simple way that you can do it to record audio and still hear yourself because a lot of times if you only have one channel out, it's like, oh man, I can't, I can't put it, I can't record it because I got to hear myself because I'm playing. All right, so let me show you what I do. First, we got our, we got our interface and we have our outlet. I get, I bought a splitter. You could buy these at like either Walmart or most likely a music store. I have this two quarter inch outs. There's just like, and then it's just like one quarter inch in. You see what I'm saying? So you just plug that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've got a uh, quarter inch cables right here. Take that out, plug this in. That's one. And I got my Merino Customs. If y'all don't know about Merino Customs, those are the best cables ever. Let's go check them out. I have a link in the description. So now we have two cables hooked up to it. All right. So the other end of these cables, I'm going to put into my focus right which this is just an audio interface. Uh, basically what an audio interface is, is, is a way of connecting like cables like this and different things and being able to record it into your computer. And so if you don't have one of these, like I guarantee like this will change your life when it comes to recording. I recommend you guys get one of these. These are, this is a, not the one I use all the time. This is just one I had at the house. This is a Focusrite Sapphire 6, but normal Focusrites you'll see are like red and they have like, um, two outs and like the best one I use uh, all the time is the two in two out I think it's two I two because it has two inputs and two outputs I would suggest that one if you're wanting to start out and just you know with this whole thing so let me, let me continue to show you so now any interface is gonna like either have one or two out or ends right here you want to make sure you have one with two for this to, to work really well and then make sure it has like a headphone out that's really important. You could do it with one, but it's only going to be one side because this is going split because when the split is like making it stereo. So, ah, oh, there we go. And then we've got the other, other end. All right. Now we've got our audio going from our AVM to our interface, which is going to our computer. So what I'm going to do right now, I have my dog, which I use PreSonus Studio One. So I'm just going to create two uh, audio tracks. So I'm just put audio uh, left. And then I'm gonna do another one and do audio right. So now, whatever comes over here, it's gonna go to my interface and then go from an interface to my computer. Now that, and that's, that's the main thing of getting the recording. So now we have enough to record our audio. So now if I, if I start playing with the group or playing with the band, I got audio coming through here, I can hit record and it'll come through clean. You want to make sure your level levels are equal. You see right now, these, <laughs> these are not equal. So you want to make sure these are like somewhat equal and you don't want the audio to be distorting. I'm going to record and enable both of them. See the audio coming through. Got some audio coming through. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit record. You see where the audio is at right now? But those waves, see where those waves look like? That's about, those size waves is about what you want. You don't want anything too crazy big because watch, if I cut this up too much, look at that. Woo, that's hot. That's, you know that's distorting. So like, let's bring it down a little bit. See, like, look. Here you see that my little peaks start, those red peaks show me that I'm distorted. See, even those, those are fine, but I would just be careful because they, they're really close to being too big. So I'm gonna pull it back down just a little bit more. And so like now, look, you see now it's, it's just, it's a pretty good spot. So now I could bring, add levels. Remember, you always add level after the, after the fact. If it's if if your waves are like down here, you know, kind of small, ish like that, you know, that's even that's fine too, because you can always add volume. You can't take away that distortion. That distortion just destroys it. Okay, so like even if they're like that small, okay, that's fine. I mean, I would give it a little bit more so I could have a little bit more to work with, but that literally, that's the best way of um, just getting that audio good and clean. And now you're probably thinking, how in the world do I hear myself now? So that's the reason why I said this headphone jack is important because anything that goes into this is gonna come out right here in this headphone jack. So now 
I'm gonna grab my headphones. All right, and that is the setup. This causes you to be able to record and play at the same time without losing where you're at or anything in that sense. And I would just make sure you practice with it first before you use it in a service because if you don't, it, you can really get thrown off and really th throw yourself off. It'll take a couple times to get used to just doing this setup, but that is how I do it. All right, so now let's take a look at Behringer's view on this. Uh, the Behringer X32 is like what everybody, um, well, I don't want to say everybody, man, my voice is so echoey in here. Hey, hello. This is Behringer's uh, play on their inner system for the X32, which is called the Power Play or Power Play 16, or you can think about it as the P16, which is most everybody thinks about it or knows it as. The back of it, though, is a little bit different um, than the a Avion. It's got some more controls in the front, but the back has, like, you know, this little power adapter. A little, this is an on and off switch. And that's how you get uh, your channels there hooked up to the system. You got MIDI out right here, or actually MIDI in, sorry. Um, then you got line out the right and the left and you have the headphones out the normal headphones There's two ways you can do this with these you can go left and right straight from the uh, P16 into your interface. So just like let me show you an example. So let me grab uh, a couple of quarter-inch cables So you can go straight out of here out of your P16 Okay that's one. Oh, if I can plug it in. All right, that's two. Okay, now watch this. So now I'm gonna take these two cables and I'm gonna put them right into my interface. Boom, boom, okay? And so now that's going to pick up my mix from here. Now remember, when you're mixing and um, your ears and everything, like if, because you're using the same mix as what you're listening to, you have to be, make sure you balance it right. You, make, you have to make sure it balances like when it comes to the band and everything so people know whenever you're, they're watching your video or, or you're listening back or whatever you're doing with the, the audio that you can um, hear what's happening. You don't want it to just be your instrument. You don't want it to just be drums or just bass or just guitar. Just remember that. Um, you want to get an overall view, okay? Because like whenever you record, you can't really go back and remix it. So you need to make sure that your vocals and everything is tamed. Uh, but I would suggest like whenever you're doing the mix from here to do it flat because like with this EQ, you don't want this EQ to be like all like crazy and out of whack like that. You want it to be like pretty much, if you can keep it flat, that gives you a good, just basic reference of, and they all have like little notches that, that kind of stops it right there in the middle. You could do that. You just need like a basic reference of like, <clears throat> of that. You could go into your interface and then it goes to your computer just like we did on the a Avion one. Or the other option is if you have uh, an iRig, you can actually, go into your iRig as well a little different way um, so let me grab my iRig so I got my iRig Pro right here so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two the uh, the ones that are going out right here to get out of my interface and go into my splitter okay I'm, and I'm doing this because I have all, both of these there's another way you could do this too that's even easier. I'll show you in a second. So now both of these are one. And I'm gonna put this one into my iRig. So now you have this setup right here. So you got the two going to the, the splitter and the splitter going to the interface. And so what happens is that, so now when I hook up my phone to it, boom, go to my iRig app, iRig recorder, as it pulls up, see the light comes on. Now I'm ready to go. So now it's something too um, that I haven't talked about is that when you start recording audio, recording video um, on your phone, it activates the iRig. So watch this. So let's say, uh, let's say I close out of that iRig, iRig recorder, and I go to my camera. See it comes on when the camera comes on. You see that? That light pops right on up. 
so now when I go and I record video, let me, so like when I go and record video now, now this is recording my audio from my P16 directly to my video so it's automatically synced so you don't have to even have to worry about doing it separately it's like automatically synced now so this is a really great way of doing it if you're using your phone as your like recording device like when it comes to recording your video so so you don't even have to worry about like syncing it up you can just put these together and it syncs automatically to your mix and if you want to hear your uh, headphones your headphones out headphone out is still right here just take your Take your handy dandy headphone connection, plug it right in, and you can hear your mix just like normal. Another way that doesn't have to do with this, so if say you're not playing in a church, okay, say that you're <clears throat> that what you see when you go to the go to a gig or go play live is a monitor kind of like this. Okay? You see, I don't have there's nothing like there's no connection really because it needs power and you don't really know how to how to use it with this. So honestly, what it is that <clears throat> that the way that you use it with monitors and like in live situations where you don't have the ability to do it, most times is to get a zoom recorder. If you don't know what a zoom recorder is, I suggest you try it. Like look it up. It's really cool. You have they have all different time kinds of like uh, in different price ranges. So I would suggest take a look at that if you if you don't have like a. Um, uh, any kind of monitor, mo monitor mixes or anything like that, and it's just wedges. The best thing to do with that is to sit it in one good spot on the stage where you're playing. Um, because sometimes if you're playing drums, you don't want it to be right beside the drums. You kind of want it to be somewhere in the center where you can get all the different sounds together. If you have a monitor, put it or, by, or your wedge, um, put the, that by your wedge so it could get your all the audio of everything and just make sure your mix is good enough in your wedge that you can do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If y'all have any questions, hit me up. Y'all know what it is. I'll see y'all the next video.